Welcome to the Friday. I hope everybody is doing well. I have a lot of different things. Um, you know the drill questions in the chat. Um, we will get to the questions, maybe about 10 minutes of questions between 2.20, 2.25 and 2.30, 35. Um, I already there's see some questions popping up, but I'm gonna start with a couple of things. So first, um, as promised, we're gonna do more than just only more than just COVID now. So with COVID, one thing to keep an eye on, uh, statistics, as you know, hard to find, but looks like we are going down in terms of cases overall everywhere, particularly in US too. But there's one thing that is new, and that is the, let me see if that's gonna work. So that's a new variant of the interest. It's, it's called Arcturus, but it's really just a variant of Omicron also called XBB116, I'll put that in there too. A um, couple of things about this virus, it probably explains why we have an increased number of patients when they get COVID, they get um, some of the return of original symptoms back. The loss of smell we've been seeing increasingly, headaches we've been seeing increasingly, more upper respiratory and more nasal symptoms, like looks like just a regular uh, URI. Very mild, still uh, a bit more contagious than even base Omicron uh, and most of the cases in India, but we are seeing slight increase up here in US. The good news, um, it's basically Omicron. It doesn't seem to be a whole lot more severe maybe a slight more severe, but the difference is relatively small. So the prediction from what I'm seeing is that probably in the fall, we are going to see this guy going up a bit. Um, good news, the current vaccine is supposed to cover it. So that's really more of a COVID update. So I'm gonna put a common read about it from fortune.com if you guys want to take a look at a bit more details on that so what i'll do is i can take one or two questions about COVID now uh, not long COVID. i want to come back to there's a question from linda i'll come back to that um okay do you suggest having the fifth dose now or wait for the new one in a couple of months okay so let's talk a little bit about vaccine because there's a couple of new, it's, they're not necessarily updates, they're just a longer database uh, based on the same studies. Um, I, for If you're not high risk category, I don't think that we're going to potentially be vaccinating at all going forward. If you're gonna be a high risk of getting it like a healthcare worker, similar to a flu, you're probably gonna be offered vaccine in a fall. Anybody who's under 65 and don't have any chronic medical illnesses, potentially there's gonna be no more boosters at all, none. And the logic is quite, and that's a WHO data. I don't actually have a link, but you can look it up. The reason for that is the following. Apparently the vaccines are really not decreasing the spread by a whole lot. They're decreasing it by 30, 50%. It's grossly inadequate to try to vaccinate the entire population. And second, it's even more interesting. Turns out that the, we no longer really activating B cells. So the protection from B cell activation lasts between one to two months only. You're not going to get six vaccines a year. It's craziness. It's gonna be more side effects than any benefits. So basically at this point, we are relying on a T cell uh, immune reactions, which are basically lifelong. They do not have expiration dates. You can't kind of run out of them. And so the idea in the past was, okay, we're going to use mostly um, antibody responses. The problem is that the virus keeps mutating and we're never going to chase it adequately. So the T cell response, however, is completely not related to antibodies. It's extremely broad. It doesn't matter how virus will mutate. So in essence, we will never slide back towards what happened in the past with the first round when nobody seen a virus or a vaccine before. So in essence, I probably will not even off going to be offering vaccines to my 65 year old healthy people. I'm probably gonna be vaccinating people who are over 75 or 80 and only those on addition who have a very high risk conditions like cancer on the treatment, uh, maybe very advanced illnesses like end of Al and Alzheimer's disease and a few others. But most of you basically probably not going to fall under ever getting the boosters again. 
uh, you will have an option of getting it. But from my perspective, I think the value of those boosters is going to be so small. I'm probably going to never get vaccinated again unless I'll get a get a mandate from the work because they're going to do something. But it doesn't seem like it makes any sense. Um, and again, that's because chances of me, for example, getting serious illness is going to be very, very low. The only reason for me to get vaccinated is to prevent the spread to um, my patients. But if I'm still doing so much telemedicine and only going to office twice, and when I'm in office, I'm wearing a mask, I think it's probably a very, very low risk for my patients too. So I'll take a more, couple more questions on this. For how long after you have COVID? So forever. You basically have this natural immunity forever. Um, there's no expectation it will ever decrease because, again, of the different angle of, of the protection. Now, the B response is going to drop, and that's the key aspect. So if you want to have higher level of protection with a faster response, to the disease, yeah, yeah, the periodic vaccination may make sense. Again, only if you're at a relatively high risk, Linda, I don't think you will fall into that category at all. So, okay, let's take a couple more questions. Venetia has a question there. Um, <clears throat> I did not have a test to verify it, but I'm in week three of what feels like another dose of COVID. And I have all the symptoms you mentioned with the addition of an extremely painful sore throat at the beginning of the course of the disease. Does that sound like the variant you're talking about? No, no well, because very unlikely because of the length of illness. You, you know, unless you're really, well, I guess theoretically it could be because three weeks you could still have an active disease if you didn't take Paxlovid. Yeah, I, I think you definitely need to get tested, I, I, I think. That's why I told everybody early on before the test disappeared from free supply, um, get the test. Unfortunately, by the way, tests have a, about a year expiration date. So if you have kids sitting there forever for the past couple of years, check the expiration dates. You can probably still use it, but I would be careful if the result is negative. Um, okay. So definitely get tested. If it's positive, let me know otherwise, or talk to your local doctor. Uh, otherwise, Otherwise, it's probably something else. I mean, there are some other things that are going around, you know, including, well, this is not RSV. RSV would have given you more lung symptoms. Masking protocol. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> so nobody is masking, as you know. Um, we're still masking at the clinic optionally, meaning if the patient comes in and they feel strongly, they don't want to wear a mask, we don't mandate it. But providers are all wearing masks. In interestingly, MFA, made masking policy optional for staff. Um, I think a lot of people probably like 50-50 masking at the MFA in my experience, the way I was observing it. Um, I would still mask if you're going on a plane. Um, and I also would still mask if you're going into a very busy uh, crowded surrounding for a while in a small space, like uh, you guys may come up with some examples here. Uh, I wouldn't even mask when I go shopping because usually you've got pretty large space. Um, uh, you know, I think exposure is going to be unlikely to be sufficient to get serious anything. Remember, because you're also trying to prevent not just a getting it, but also getting a massive dose of exposure. So when you're in a captivated space for a long time and can't get out of it. So think of it that way. Like, on a train, if the train is very half empty, uh, you know, you there for half an hour, I wouldn't worry about it. You're going on a something like a, a long, car, long car ride with someone who is coughing. I mean, I probably would put the mask on. So, so you're going to have to basically highly stratify the risk of a given situation. All right. Um, well, since I started doing questions, I guess let me address Linda's long COVID question. So I don't know exactly in Montgomery County, so uh, Hopkins has a clinic and then we have a clinic for long COVID. Uh, our clinic mostly virtual and definitely acupuncture helps a lot. We actually have a whole program of doing self acupressure and self um, moxa. So you buy a, a, a moxa stick, which I can show you, smoke, smokeless moxa on Amazon for $10, a little stick. You light it up on top of a point and you do it two or three times a day. You really can't get acupuncture that frequent. And there's a special treatment protocol that Ashley teaches people to do that. That seems to be very effective for 
COVID fatigue uh, works for probably about half of everybody who tries it. And same for insomnia. Um, Bill Rallo is in Montgomery County in uh, Ellicott City or near there. Uh, William Rallo, I'll put his name in there. So he has a clinic. I think he does, uh, it's an integrative clinic. I think they, they seeing long COVID. I don't know if they have an actual program, but I'm sure that he sees patients. He does take some insurances for certain things. So I would check that out. Okay, uh, Venetia is asking a very interesting question. Venetia, I actually created a YouTube video to talk about this, whether or not shingles vaccine makes sense. There's a whole review of the literature Check out my YouTube video. Uh, if okay, you, if you I'm can't subscribed to it. Okay. It, yeah, if you can't find it, let me know, but it's there. I got it. I know what it is. I'm subscribed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, which vaccine to get for shingles? I Definitely, there's only one. It's a, the, the, the newest one called Shingrix. Okay. The, the older one is just not as effective. I think it was called Zostavax, the older vaccine. We don't really recommend that anymore. Uh, and actually, about a, about a year ago, Shingrix started to get Medicare covered without questions. They used okay. bulk because it was it was quite expensive. It's like four hundred dollar vaccine. Yeah. We're not paying for it now. I think they do. The stick. Um, it's a Moxa Moxa stick. It's actually hard to do everything by myself. Usually, I have a couple of minutes <laughs> to look things up and go on Amazon and give you a link. Now I have to like talk and do it at the same time. Not very effective. Smokeless marks the stick. Um, let's see. All right. Uh, oh, this is the good one. All right. I'm just going to put something in a text uh, in a box there in a second once this comes on. So you guys can take a look. So I think something like this, it's a couple of dollars. Um, okay. So next topic. Um, this is a summer in line with the healthy eating, something that uh, Dr. Frame would love to hear upcoming. I'll put a little v, uh, plug for my YouTube channel. So I'm a huge fan of car currants, C-U-R-R-A-T-A-T. -A -A so um, they basically, there's black, red, white, actually there's also yellow, but I, I've never seen it in the US. There was only in Russia when I was growing up, we had that. So they look like this. So this is the red ones. Um, so they look like, I don't know, I guess like little small, I don't know, you, you see, right? And then the black ones, they're also kind of grow similar, but their uh, clusters are smaller. So I just kind of have them by, uh, it's easier to pick them one by one. So that's how they look. Um, this are pretty big. This are from um, Larry, Larry Land Farm. Uh, you can go and pick them yourself. I don't know if they still have black, but they still should have some red left. Uh, not actually all that expensive, even relatively. Like you can get the red currants in Whole Foods, but it's crazy expensive. Like a little box is like really small box is like eight dollars, I think. Yeah. There for eight dollars, you get uh, like I think three or four pound box, like you know. And for we got fifty dollar box, which looked like a bucket. Like I'm not kidding, the size of it. So we've uh, collected a bucket of berries and ate about two thirds of them and, and, and actually just about two. I just made some um, compote, like basically a little bit of sugar, boil the berries for about 20, 30 minutes, let them cool down, and then just gonna drink that. And then you can really easy to just put berries on a sugar and then uh, just push them through either a blender or if you have like a manual, um, to grind everything and then put them in the cans and, and put them in a the fridge. And so they're gonna be good for probably six months or so, if not more. Uh, Larry Land, I'm actually gonna put the link to my YouTube video that I did about this because, because why not? Um, I actually have a, uh, more than like, probably close to five minutes of information there. And also there's a very interesting write-up. Uh, these are pretty unique berries. They're the highest food, um, the richest food in omega-6 GLA uh, in U.S. So you can get uh, GLA from borage and from evening pro primrose oil, but those are not easy foods to eat. I mean, we usually get them in capsules as a supplement. So hemp seed is not. So there's a confusion there. 
So hemp seeds do not contain GLA. They can contain precursor and about 30 to 40% of Americans don't convert very well. So this is why we're seeing a massive rampant omega-6 deficiency in the country. Um, versus the berries, surprisingly, is one of the very few foods that, that do contain a further down uh, product that does not require delta-6 desaturase to be converted to the uh, DGLA, dehomogamalinolaic uh, um, acid, because that's the active molecule in the system. So it's a pretty cool uh, topic to look. You do need to eat a lot of berries to get the, your GLA. You, you need to eat like probably half a pound every day. So it's gonna be hard to do, but at least, um, but it tastes very good. And, um, and I wish I could share the taste with you. This is one <laughs> thing we can't do virtually, unfortunately. Um, but, but so yeah, um, and uh, there's also a whole bunch of other benefits from these berries. Of course, they're full in antioxidants. They have a lot of this uh, dark colorings, especially the black ones. They have a lot of xanthines like molecules that are very protective for cancer and for aging. And so there's a lot of good benefit from this berry, just like from any other of your favorite berries. Um, also very high, especially red currant, extremely high in vitamin C, something like 10 times higher than oranges, um, Miller, uh, the, the volume, volume per volume. So, so check that out. I find that that's a very cool topic. All right, um, let's see if I got any other questions. Oh yeah, so the Larry, um, yeah, I'll, I'll actually will find the farm real quick because in case you guys don't wanna watch my video, but just wanna get the, go to the farm. They have uh, cherries, sour cherries, plums. Uh, now they're probably gonna have peaches very soon. Although those are really honestly, um, but this is like, they basically specialize in picking your own. So there's like usually like lines of people. I'm not kidding. Uh, they open at nine o'clock on the weekend and there's lines of cars coming at, at that time just because it's kind of a fun, th fun thing to do, especially if you have little kids or grandkids. It's one of those great things to teach them and show them the how food grows. Um, so yeah, yeah, we took our teenage kids uh, last weekend and uh, um, well, one of them, the other one is in camp, so. Yeah, goji berries. So I, it's a great one. Well, we actually, where I am now at the cabin, we have a whole bunch of wild goji berries, which I didn't even know until a friend of ours pointed out. I have not seen those being grown anywhere for picking. Uh, you can buy dry goji berries uh, pretty easily. Um, but um, I, I think, I don't know if you can buy, like, I don't know what stores you will buy the... Um, fresh ones. I think the Whole Foods sells them, I believe, right? Uh, but I have not seen, I only seen the dried ones. And you're going to have a hard time finding the fresh one because they're very short-lived. So most likely everything you're going to find is going to be dry. You can easily find them on the Amazon in dried form. And generally in Chinese medicine, that's what they recommend. They, they usually recommend them dry. They're very easy to cook. Uh, they're wonderful addition to a bunch of meals. You can mix them with something like rice, for example. Um, but they're, they're often considered, um, they're definitely part of Chinese medicine and they prescribe for medicinal purposes all the time. So that's another very potent. It looks, sounds like we have to have a whole like presentation. Maybe I'll do a whole podcast on berries. Oh, Dr. Frame, that's a great topic. Why don't we pick an expert and do a podcast on berries? I think that's, it's probably out of all the foods out there. Uh, that's one of my like probably top three favorite foods, all kinds of berries. I don't particularly favor any specific one. I, I really, the currants is unique and also it, it's just because they're in a season right now. So that's another thing. Um, my strong belief is that it's really good to try to eat a lot of foods that are particularly in season when they're fresh, when they don't get processed. Um, and it's, it's also a kind of a natural cycle of that particular food. Um, so yeah. All right, we're at 223 and I still have a topic to cover. So um, I told you already that the link to that particular YouTube video that I was gonna do about 40 Hertz is not ready, uh, but actually let's see if, yeah, it's not ready yet. It's okay, I'll take care of it later. But what I'm gonna do for now we're going to generally talk a little bit about the power of 40 hertz sound 
um, its effectiveness for concentration, for cognitive function. And that'll, it's, the reason I'm going to do this is because then our, our actual practice today for 20, 25 minutes is going to be all about, uh, about that. We, we're going to listen to the 40 hertz music and we're going to do some breathing practices to it. Um, so what is 40 hertz? Well, um, the 40 hertz is basically you have a music or a sound that has the frequency that, that resonates at the 40 cycles per minute per second. So that's, that's the definition of 40 hertz. Why is it so important? Well, it turns out that our brain has a very specific brain waves. And of course, all of you are familiar with different letters, right? So the alpha brain wave, beta, gamma, like a gamma, for example, is a very good state for meditative um, awareness and things like this. Uh, but there is a, a rapidly increase in total amount of science around here. And particularly turns out that for many um, conditions, uh, specifically um, Alzheimer's disease and, and several other types of neurocognitive impairment, 100% of patients lose the natural 40 hertz frequency. And when that was discovered, probably I want to say close to 20 years ago, initial studies in animal models looked that it would completely reverse Alzheimer's in mice and rats almost immediately. So just within a couple of days, the process of Alzheimer's was reversed in, in, in small animals. Of course, it took quite a while, but it turns out that in humans that we're seeing a very similar pattern. Um, now, the, the, the problem is then how do you deliver this, right? So the question, while it's clearly working both in humans and in animals, but you need to have a delivery system to get the 40 hertz visual stimulation and the hearing stimulation because you, 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 you need to uh, tune the brain to that wavelength. Um, we just concluded the study that just got accepted last week to publication. We're just finalizing a list of authors and things like this. And it'll probably get published before the end of August in a paper form. But I think I'm, I can already share the actual manuscript with everybody who's interested. So this was a non-randomized study. It just took uh, patients who um, were willing to purchase the iPad. So, so the te technology here is based on an iPad or nowadays there's about 20 different Android devices that are acceptable for this as well as iPhone 13 and 14 Pro only. So not plus, not others. It has to be pro because only that those devices can generate 40 hertz light. Uh, the sound 40 hertz is a lot easier. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of links. Uh, if you just want to do the sound, you don't want to use any devices. So then what you can do, uh, you can use a 40 hertz sound. And I'm going to give you, so this is the latest album that kind of a more jazz, very easy to listen. And also, if you go to Spotify and you put 40 hertz diurnal uh, beat, uh, biurnal beat, or you can also look up on Spotify by this author, Yuval Ron, Yuval Ron um, you will find a lot of different music. So now the, the caveat, you're not going to get most benefit if you just listen through the, through the ambient, just like we're talking. You need to use the uh, headphones over the years not the ones that go inside because those don't have sufficient bass. And the, the biurnal signal has to be delivered through the headset because of the way it's coordinated between two ears. Biurnal aspect, you can't truly hear. It's something that goes subliminal. You're not processing on conscious level. Uh, it enhances the 40 Hertz delivery. So it makes it more potent. You will still have a benefit from 40 Hertz, mostly on concentration, on the cognitive fatigue. So patients who have brain fog, I, I, fog, I recommend listening to this as much as possible. I've had a few long COVID patients say that, wow, like basically the moment they just put the earbuds and listen on their phone, the fatigue, cognitive fatigue resolves within a couple of minutes. Um, I personally mostly benefit from sensing more concentration. I don't feel any of the other benefits of it. Um, and interestingly, the, the study that we're publishing, we are observing an almost immediate spike in EEG. EEG is the te technology that assesses the brain waves. And we see almost instant uh, spike of the 40 Hertz once the, the person starts listening to the music. When you listen and, uh, and do the light therapy at the same time, the blinking light, we have the highest peak. 
We just do the light, almost no peak, basically probably not clinically relevant. We do just music, it's about 50% lower than combination of sound and light together. So going forward, we're just gonna recommend everybody to get sound and light together. Um, yeah, exactly. So Dr. Frame puts there that it kind of soothes. That's what um, the podcast I did today with um, Yuval, Ron, and um, uh, Dr. Dr. Gold is um, on. They've discussed that a lot. Uh, that's one of the most common thing that they hear from people. Um, and there are a number of physicians that are actually playing this music in the offices. Um, you're probably not going to dramatically distinguish it from any kind of new age music. The main difference, if you listen to it, you'll hear a lot lower frequency. It's going to feel more like a humming rather than kind of general nature sounds or general um, higher pitched musical instruments. It's pretty fascinating that until about 300 years ago, those of you who are music fans, you'd be interested in hearing this, until around 300 years ago, maybe 250, um, most of the classical instruments were tuned at the lowest sound of E. They were tuned to 40 hertz. It just somehow randomly happened. And a lot of the Eastern, Eastern uh, musical instruments turned to that as well. Uh, but then later, especially now, there is an increase in frequency. So it moved from 40 to something like 42 to 45. And, and probably um, it's just not as effective in terms of if you're trying to, to do this, so it's kind of interesting. Yeah, so you theoretically should be able to hum this, but it's a kind of a low humming. Uh, don't ask me to reproduce it. <laughs> I'm not gonna try. Uh, and, and nor will I try to tell you that like I understand all of the technology here, but uh, do listen to the podcast when I post it. Now, the reason it's on our, it's on my YouTube, not on our GW podcast is because we have this, separation on my YouTube channel, we do post some things that are directly related to my spiritual work uh, in GW. We decided we're going to abstain from any discussion of religiosity and spirituality. It was kind of a mutual decision. So that's why, um, and the, 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 the people I interviewed today on the podcast, they are directly linked to the Sufi order that I belong to. So we've talked a little bit about that interface between Sufism and music there. Uh, what about if you have a low frequency hearing loss? I don't know. I actually don't know. My gut feeling says that it's still going to work just fine because it's not about hearing the sound. It's about vibratory effect. Um, it's, we do know for fact, for example, that the same exact uh, model works in every, in every animal and it does work uh, in uh, deaf, deaf animals too. So it's more of a vibration. It's not just a music. Um, they're probably, it's probably not gonna be as effective. I'm assuming certain aspect will not be as useful, um, but um, I'm guessing that the overall aspect will still work. Um, Vinish is asking about, but it's, it's on my YouTube channel. So if you go to my- What's YouTube, YouTube? okay. If you go to my YouTube channel, you will find that there's a, just one type of podcast. Apparently YouTube is now allowing you to call particular series of videos podcasts. So it's there. There's only two right now. This is our third one. So, okay. Um, and that is all, unless somebody has a last burning question, we're about halfway through and I was gonna move on to do um, the practice run through, make sure I didn't miss anything. Janet, take a look, see, see if I may make sure I don't miss anything. Yeah, that's an interesting point about pesticides. I actually don't know how currents rate it. Uh, I presume that there's so few farms grow. Oh, so why we're not seeing this uh, berries at all? Because they were illegal. They were actually, you would get go to jail until around 2003. If, if, if the Department of Agriculture finds you trying to grow them, apparently they carried back in the day some horrible plant illness that wiped out like large percent of Eastern and Northeast plants. I don't know if it's true or not that that was communicated with me by someone I trust. Um, in Europe, it's a very common plant and heavily used and it's one of the most common berries. I, I, I'm guessing 
um, that disease is gone because now uh, it's a slowly coming back in the US. So check it out. By the way, if you have your own garden, that's a great berry to grow. It's, it, it's pretty um, hardy, grows very quickly. You will have berries on a second or third year. In the first few years, you're gonna have very few berries, but then as bushes, grow, and they're bushes, they're about size of maybe up to the standard uh, human height. Um, the black ones can get a little bit uh, smaller than the red, Reds, red can grow a little bigger, but they can be, they can grow. And then they kind of, they can even self-propagate themselves through the roots. Um, and yeah, if you have enough space, try it out. They, um, they do make uh, thorns. So they're also kind of nice as a barrier against the, uh, you know, whatever animals are. So they're also used for that in, in some parts. Okay, so um, I think that is all for what I have today and I don't see any questions. So what I'm gonna do now for the practice, um, I'm gonna invite you to First, we're going to listen to the music. For that, I'm going to share the sound. Just give me one second. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, I'm not gonna share my screen. I'm just gonna share the sound. So what we're gonna do, computer audio. And um, I'm gonna first put just a one very short sound so you get some idea. And this is a sample called uh, Moonlight from the new album. And while this is going, it's 45 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and find uh, the longer sounds and the way we, what we're going to do for the next 20, 25 minutes, we're going to do a breathing practice while the 40 Hertz is playing. I'm gonna give everybody this first uh, minute or two if you have a headpiece that you can put that is over the ears, uh, mine is here, so I'll show you. Over the ears, okay. If you have a headpiece that looks like this, then definitely go ahead and go get it because you will get better benefit um, using it if you can connect it to your computer. I think I can totally do that, so I'm gonna do that too while everybody getting ready. Yeah, so only if you have the headset, you should do it that way. Let's see, can you guys hear me still? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to switch, no, not speaker. Okay. Uh, Vinicia, do me a favor, mute just, I'm gonna mute you. Okay, so you guys still hear me well? Okay, good. All right, so now I'm gonna first play the sample so you get an idea while I'm orienting myself. And please let me know if you can hear it. Can you hear the music? So that was a sample. It's on that link that, that's in the chat, um, the link to the, all the way on top specifically to the um, website for, for the meta music. Okay, so, uh, and now what we're gonna do is, we're not gonna be able to hear all the tracks in the full length, each track is a bit long, but uh, we're gonna start with the earth. And we're going to do our elemental breath while the music is playing. So, so you should be able to hear the sound. I, I, I do want you to check in with someone whether or not the levels of the music and my voice are good. You hear the music and my voice at the same time. Okay. 
So find comfortable position. If you don't need to go lay down because it feels like it by all means, but if it's not too difficult, I actually think you should be sitting up. first song is the earth and we're going to start with the earth breath so sitting comfortably inhale and exhale through the nose the first couple of breaths sink your concentration to the lower part of your spine or to the base of the spine. So when you inhale, draw the energy from the earth through the base of your feet, through your legs to the bottom of your spine. constricted in any part of your body because of the spasm or some kind of uneasiness so try to see if you can breathe through that area and let the sound penetrate there and just become a little bit So now switching to the water, inhale through the nose and then exhale through the mouth. Listening to the running quality of the water and the sound. Best if you can imagine yourself being submerged in a body of water.
person in the hand to concentrate uh, in the area of the body or the color of the color concentrate in the color dark gray or teal or teal. Transition to fire. So fire, we inhale through the mouth and exhale through the nose. Fire is a bit more active element. It has the rising quality to it. So you can hear the sound, the music, the music.
So air is inhale and exhale through the mouth. It's a much lighter element. It has the quality of lightness to it, quality of letting go of our thoughts, paying attention to our mind, creating its own process of thinking. So instead following your thoughts, just try to observe them, try to let them simply be with you being an observer of your own thoughts. I always like to say that for the air element, the best analogy is you're laying in the grass and you're looking at the sky seeing clouds of your thoughts passing by and just form images you don't attach yourself to that you just watch them pass For the ether, you can either breathe, breathe through your nose or breathe through the nose and mouth together, keeping the uh, pace of the breath natural, so not very slow. And we're going to do this part of the breathing a bit slower, and we're going to listen to the uh, floating piece. Uh, this is from the new volume. 40 hertz, and uh, we're going to listen to the entire track. You can basically just concentrate on the music itself, or if you prefer, concentrate on what is sacred for you, your personal relationship with the divine, or define it. Just tune into that quality of resonance and listen to the music at the same time. Thank you. 
see that there are a couple of questions. So um, if you feel like commenting on this, please put something in the chat. Um, the elemental breath is best to be done in the morning, but if you're gonna end the music and not stick precisely to the, each element, just do more of a listening to the 40 Hertz while you're doing deep breathing, it probably doesn't matter. I will do any part of the day. Yes. So, so uh, the 40 hertz would work for going to sleep. It's probably not my first choice for that. Um, there are probably a better sound than music, uh, but it is very soothing and calming naturally. So if um, you could definitely try it. it may, you may find it actually quite helpful for sleep. So, uh, and I feel very calm and peaceful myself. So it's, kind of hard for me to come back to the usual fast paced thought process after doing this, which I, I think it's good for me and good for probably everybody. All right, hope everybody liked this. Uh, it will be recorded. Um, now, if you have a Spotify, all of this music is in, in there. So the first piece we played, first four pieces for the earth water, fire, and air, those were six healing sounds by Ron, Yuval Ron, and then the last one was uh, Floating Peace Piano from the new album uh, that's called The Healing Power of 40 Hertz Volume 3, and it's a common jazz ballads for brain health, that's the actual title of that. So, yeah. Um, so, um, if you have an iPhone 13 Pro or 14 Pro and you want to use the light and sound, you will need to download ALZ.Live app. Uh, for the entire description of the process, I recommend you first watch the 10 minute YouTube video, which we already posted, but I'm going to repost it again. And um, we're also going to add a full podcast. Uh, with, the, with the composer of the music that we just listened to. And I may ask him to come back and talk to us and do more of a demo at some point. Uh, you guys are probably going to like that. He has much more advanced way of presenting his music. Just a heads up, everybody. The ALZ.life website is having some glitches right now. So I've been trying to go to it um and uh, you get one of those weird 
uh, messages about, you know, something's wrong with the website. So uh, you might want to leave it alone for today and maybe go back to it um, tomorrow or Sunday. No, nope, it's, it's working. Oh, it's working know. for you? Yeah. I'm okay, it's not working today. for me. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, I'll check it out. Maybe um, I put the maybe I put the wrong. No, 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 no. You're link. right. You, you're right. So maybe I'm wrong. So and you don't really if you want to just download the app, you don't need to go to website. Just download yeah. the app. Yeah. Uh, and so we'll be sending you all of those links in the post event email that will go out this afternoon. Oh, how dare you! Well, they're laying around here. Uh huh. Um, Tell us who do we have next, next week? week? Yeah, who do we have? Angela. Angela. Angela Gabriel, acupuncturist and traditional Chinese medicine practitioner uh, of the GW Center for Integrative Medicine and the better uh, half of do the doc Dr. Kogan um, will be leading the wellness talk and the mind-body practice. Excellent. And I will, of course, help her out with questions and anything else that is going to want to hear. Enjoy a beautiful weekend. Um, it's not too hot, not too cold. Stay safe. See you next week. Bye, everybody.